साबरे सर यस मैडम वेलकम वेलकम जंगले सर वेलकम वेलकम एवरीवन थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग थैंक यू बरा वाटला आला यस थैंक यू किसने उमा मैडम प्लीज म्यूट युअर सर उमा मैडम हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग मैम वी आर लाइव नाव ऑन यूट्यूब हेलो मैम एम आई ऑडिबल यस 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 मैम 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 वी 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 आर 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 लाइव लाइव विल टेक वन वन और मिनट्स मोर आई आई थिंक थिंक बिकॉज़ वेयर वेटिंग वेटिंग इन द स्टूडेंट्स मैम इट इज स्टार्टेड सो विथ योर ड्यू परमिशन कैन वी स्टार्ट द सेशन yes madam yes okay 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 uh good morning everyone on behalf of vpn joshi bedekar college department of banking and insurance i assistant professor samidha parab welcome you all in a guest lecture on cyber security and banking frauds today as we have all customized to digital transactions cyber security has become a crucial area to handle this field is becoming increasingly significant due to continuous expanding reliance on computer systems smartphones smart televisions internet and wireless networks cyber security is also one of the significant challenges in the contemporary world due to its complexity and other factors our today's guest lecture is all about this cyber security and banking frauds i welcome all the faculty members and our guest speaker gyan bara sir now i would request our coordinator of banking and insurance department dr murumai thatte ma'am to give her opening remarks for this guest lecture over to you ma'am thank you very much samidha madam uh very good morning to everyone uh, respected to today's guest speaker gyan baraha sir head of the departments dear colleagues and dear students department of banking insurance is conducting various student centric activities to develop the different skills and uh, to aware students about the contemporary issues in the banking and insurance sector as rbi is observing financial literacy week during 14th february to 18th february 2022 with a focus to create awareness about convenience of the digital transactions uh, as a part of this initiative we also thought department of banking insurance to take a small effort to uh, conduct one webinar on the side team for this year's financial literacy week declared by rbi is go digital and go secure it's our duty to take some precautions while doing online transactions and various financial transactions because we commit many mistakes and how to avoid those mistakes how to have a safe financial transactions digital transactions we have amidst us today gyan barah sir Who is uh, our alumni 
and uh, sir proudly said that yes uh, he is very overwhelmed to be associate with joshi bedekar college after so many years and i welcome you sir on behalf of department of banking insurance our respected principal dr suchitra a naik madam entire vpm family and all hod's coordinators and every uh, vpm family member thank you very much sir uh, to join uh, uh, for this particular session and uh, really students will take the advantage of uh, this webinar although we are meeting virtually definitely we will meet when everything will be streamlined we'll meet offline in a campus and you will be very happy to join us and uh, and to visit the campus again so thank you very much and thanks to all uh, those who have joined over here a special thanks to adipak sabri sir who is the hod of economics department uh, uh, uh dhavre sir dr anil dhavre sir who is a hindi department uh, head of the uh, hod so i welcome both of you jangle sir every members who have joined over here thank you very much and over to you samita ma'am yes ma'am thank you so much ma'am uh now i would like to take a uh, opportunity to formally introduce our guest speaker uh, mr gyan bara sir he is from icici bank he has 37 years of varied work experience with reputed organizations in pharmaceutical manufacturing financial and banking industries he was working as a deputy general manager in icici bank and designated as head of investigation financial crime prevention group he has been a member of various large fraud investigation committees of icici bank and was successful in resolving cases in favor of a bank he was highly successful in large value recoveries in various bank fraud cases using criminal proceedings and court rules welcome mr gyan bara sir we would love to hear you from over to you sir thank you so much uh, i request all the sorry to interrupt sir i request all the participants please mute yes sir please please good morning uh, good morning uh, uh, thatte ma'am uh, parab ma'am uh, i am not introduced to all the senior professors uh, however i noted down quickly a few names dhavle sir sable sir uh, i can't excuse me if i have i am missing uh, some of the senior professors uh, addressing them so i for me you are still uh, thana college and ng bedekar college professor so i i still have great amount of regard uh, for each one of you and my dear students uh, thank you uh, param ma'am for the uh, nice uh, introduction uh, uh, students uh, and professors uh, i began my journey right from the where place where you are today uh, from ng bedekar college of commerce uh, i was a student of the uh, college since uh, from 79 1979 to 84 when i passed out and went to do uh, my articles and masters in financial management from nmims and then been in the industry as uh, parab ma'am mentioned and uh, just about completed my career in icici bank just up, just two weeks back uh, where i worked for about 21 years uh, in icici bank and uh, major part of my career was uh, in uh, the fraud prevention activity of banks uh, and and of course particularly icici bank so uh, i have been uh, looking at this subject which is unfortunately not a very nice uh, um, subject because uh, it is we are seeing we only see the bad things in life and because it's fraud it's crime it's forgery it's fabrication but when i was discussing with your college senior students uh, rather your professors and uh, your uh, counterparts in other colleges i did some such of some of these seminars in other colleges too and i find that there is little or there is lot of scope that for this topic to find uh, a mention in your portions for Uh, in the banking and insurance uh, spree which you are studying there is a lot of careers open to you uh, not only in the banking industry and insurance industry as a whole but specific to cyber crime bank frauds financial frauds uh, activities which will 
take you to a larger spree. So I think so. It's important that you understand uh, this part of banking, which is a part of operation risk. Fraud risk is a part of operation risk in banks and financial institutions. And uh, there are large careers uh, opening up or already available uh, under this pre in banking and insurance and financial institutions. So uh, while uh, this is not a course which will cover everything, but I think this will introduce you to the concept of the unfortunate uh, activity, which is frauds. Uh, so not taking too much time, students, I will uh, progress uh, uh, on my presentation. Uh, while if you would have noted, uh, the invite to all of you all was on banking frauds and cyber crimes. But I, when I realized that it is uh, all that you are a banking and insurance uh, curriculum, I thought we should also talk a little about insurance frauds. And so therefore, I've included this, uh, the insurance frauds also. I just take you through my presentation. Yeah, uh, very important uh, that you need to understand what is uh, what is the definition of fraud. You see, fraud it's a white collar crime. Uh, let me read this definition for you, students. Uh, just before I start, I hope somebody can give me a thumbs up that I am audible, I am visible, and my presentation is also visible. Uh, Parab ma'am, if you can just uh, guide me on that. Uh, yes, sir. It is all good. All yeah. going good. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, a deliberate act of omission or commission by any person carried out in the course of a banking transaction or in the books of accounts maintained manually or under computer system in banks or companies, finance companies, or insurance companies, resulting into wrongful gain to any person for a temporary period or otherwise, with or without any monetary loss to the bank or to the institution. Uh, I read this out to you because if you understand, to understand fraud, you need to understand that a bank or a financial institution or an insurance company will declare an activity as fraud if somebody who's connected to the system, connected as in not physically connected, who's related to the entire transaction, does such an act by which he may gain and the other side may lose. So that is a fraud. So if you look at it, it is a question of intent. I will do something against another person or against the bank and another person may lose money and I will, in all probability, gain money by doing an act where I'm cheating you, where I'm defrauding you. So that's very simple to understand. We all have, we all know and have heard a term called 420, we keep saying, or we have heard in movies and, and uh, uh, while reading material. Now this 420 comes from the criminal procedure. It is the same thing. Someone should have an intent to cheat someone else that intent should be converted into an act. That act should give me, because I'm a fraudster, gain and you a loss. And the system of the bank is used as in, I do a physical fraud by forging your check. I do a physical fraud by stealing away your cash. I do an online fraud by taking away your money from your account. I have a bad intent. I gain you loss, lose on the banking system. So then the question comes up, why should the bank call it a fraud? It is A who has gained, B who has lost from the bank account of the customer, or of B. Why should a bank call it a fraud? Bank calls it a fraud because anybody on the system if is getting defrauded, whether or not the bank is making a loss, the bank will still call it a fraud and report that fraud to the regulator. Who is the regulator for banks? I'm sure you are understanding banking and insurance. I will take, I will want you to understand this. The regulator for a bank is Reserve Bank of India. We call it RBI. 
So we report a bank reports all its frauds to Reserve Bank of India. The question is, and we face this problem many a times when we even go to file a complaint with the police or CBI, the police asks the bank, you have not made a loss, why are you coming to complain? The loss customer or the victim customer should come and complain. We explain to them that it is immaterial who has made the loss. If a crime has taken place, I as a bank, because the crime has taken place on my platform, I am reporting this crime and I am requesting you to investigate this case. So this definition is very important for you to understand is what is somebody should have an intent, he should have an act, he should do an act against a second person or a customer or a bank itself, use the banking system, like using a check online, using uh, KYC documents, using fake documents. If that act is precipitated or is done, someone lose, whether or not the bank is losing, but someone else loses and that act is done through the banking system, then it is an act of fraud on the banking system or on the insurance company. I will have a question which maybe someone can answer me later on. Is Let's take a question that the bank has certain goods lying in one of its offices and in the night a burglary takes place a theft takes place will that theft be called a fraud or it will not be called a fraud look at the definition and then keep your answers ready when we have question answers we'll take that uh, question a burglar comes in opens the bank premises break opens rather and there is some goods like its computers its assets it steals away that assets will that be called as a fraud on the bank or not we will go to the next slide i want you to understand this question because in the context of the definition that it's an act carried out in the course of banking transaction on the system of the bank and there is a wrongful gain to one person and there is a wrongful loss to another person. Bank may or may not have a loss in that context, which means that people who are connected with the bank, either a customer, an employee, agent, do these acts and they gain and some customer or the bank loses. That is a fraud. A burglar who's not connected to the bank, comes and steals from the bank premises. Is that fraud or is it different from fraud? Hold this question and answer with you. We will come to it when we take this question later. Okay, let's let's understand the philosophy of fraud. You see, it's, uh, you, guys, you, you boys and girls are students of, of, of banking and insurance. The philosophy of why does one do a fraud is to be understood. I understand it's very simple to say uh, he does a fraud because he wants to gain. We are going by the definition which we just saw. But it is important to understand because you are students of banking and insurance, you should understand the philosophy of where fraud and why fraud originates. We originally had something called a fraud diamond or a fraud triangle, which said what? There's an opportunity to a person to do a fraud. He is motivated to do a fraud and there is a rationale to do a fraud. Opportunity because he thinks there is, uh, there is a loophole in the bank. I can mind you students, there are fraudsters, especially online fraudsters who are watching every bank, every large bank for their systems and for their products to understand if they can break through a product and perpetrate a fraud on the bank or the bank's customers. So there is always an opportunity. Banking, like any other business, is a learning activity. You keep innovating. You keep designing better products. You keep designing better systems to keep the customer safe, to keep the customer 
a very give the customer a very very a good banking experience so that the bank customer always stays with that particular bank so there is an opportunity there is a rational he says that oh i want to steal i i want to i want to defraud the bank why do i want to defraud the bank i have a rational here the bank may gave me a loss i know uh, i i can make quick money from uh, from by doing a fraud so that's a rational he is motivated because he thinks uh, he can make quick money and therefore he is motivated uh, to do this fraud so that was the this is the philosophy of course the philosophy then moved to the instead of a fraud tri diamond or a fraud triangle we said a, a fraud now we will have one more phase of over and above rationalization opportunity uh, pressure and now and capability a fraudster thinks i am capable of doing a fraud i will do the fraud there is a pressure of doing the fraud because he wants money he wants quick money rational he wants uh, he wants to gain he wants the bank or the customer to lose and therefore he does the fraud so this is the philosophy of fraud which uh, is why unfortunately frauds take place uh, you should understand what type of frauds take place in banks and insurance companies so let's start with banking uh, organizers with your permission we'll we'll take questions only at the end of the uh, of this uh, program uh, after your convenience sir no problem no issues okay so boys and girls if you have any questions uh, which is important that you understand while we are doing the presentations you may raise your questions speak up otherwise i will continue uh, doing this present of course it becomes a little boring if if only i am talking and if uh, everyone else is listening in the in the virtual world i am not sure whether you are listening or you are so if you keep asking me questions it will not only keep you awake it will make me more uh, motivated to speak and give you a much better presentation so fair let's let's uh, too early to, for you to raise questions of, of course you have to give me an answer so if somebody wants to give me an answer on the question i raised on uh, while while speaking on definition of fraud is a burglar breaking into the branch bank premises stealing away some bank's assets will be called a fraud or it will not be called a fraud he is not i'll give you a clue he is not a related person he had a plan to break open a particular building he saw uh, some access which you could be easier access to break open the a branch or a bank premises he broke it open stole some things and fled from there whether this is a fraud or it's not a fraud my question to you i'm sure you girls and boys have studied Uh, are, or are continuing to study banking and insurance you may be able to take cues from what i have said and give me an answer so i'll wait for your answer uh, while i will go to the next slide and talk to you about banking and the type of uh, frauds uh, it is important for all of you to know that what is banking banking is basically uh, borrowing money which is since your commerce students you understand when the bank borrows money it is a liability for the bank because it has to give you back the money whenever you come and ask the money so it's a liability but i keep that money i use that money because of my expertise to lend to needy eligible good customers and i borrow money at a particular cost i lend money at a particular loss particular cost that differential minus my cost of overheads and liability uh, and uh, and uh, salaries i make a profit that profit is the profit of the bank so there are various products under a bank i'm sure all of you may be having a bank account using a card debit card or your parents would have given you a, a credit card or debit card to use your parents would have opened a wallet for you and given you a pocket money in those wallets um, unlike Uh, in my days i would get pocket money only in cash i don't i'm sure some of your parents may be giving you uh, just a wallet where they are putting in money i hope you understand these products of of a bank uh, which will help you understand banking and insurance so what are the type of frauds which take place in each of these products uh, there are 
there are loans which the bank gives now these banks will give loans the banks will uh, let's say a bank gives a loan uh, for a personal what are the type of frauds somebody can make an application fraud gyan will make an application in favor of mr b and impersonate as mr b because mr gyan does not have a good kyc does not have a good credit rating so he will impersonate as b and take a loan in the name of b that's an impersonation fraud i am imper gyan is impersonating mr b because gyan himself may not be eligible to take a loan so that's impersonation frauds there's an application fraud i i apply for a loan i'm supposed to have 1 lakh rupees salary i don't have a 1 lakh rupees salary per month so i fabricate certain documents to show that i am having a 1 lakh rupees salary i fabricate a document to show that i am working in a particular company which will make me eligible credit worthy to take a loan actually in actual terms i am not working in that company and and or i may not be get drawing that type of salary which is the basic necessity for me to avail a loan from a particular bank what happens i have done a fraud i fabricated a document i fabricated salary slips i fabricated various other documents to convince the bank to convince the credit manager in the bank to convince the branch manager in the bank that i am not i am drawing better salary i am working in a particular company which will make the bank officer convinced that i can give a loan to gyan what will happen gyan will avail the loan when he starts repaying maybe for a couple of months he will repay finally he will stop repaying or he will fail to repay why not because it is a concern or maybe he is going through some tough times because his salary will not permit him to make such repayments so this is not a case of default it is it's a case of bad data case of ineligible loan i was not eligible because i didn't work in a particular company my salary was for example not 1 lakh and only 50000 rupees large number of frauds my dear friends take place on these accounts your question will be are banks not doing the checks yes banks are doing their checks but fraudsters beat the system many a times they beat the system let me give you an example if i am working in wipro in pune it is impossible for a bank officer or a bank agency to go into wipro office and check whether gyan bara is working there so because they don't have access into those companies it is difficult for 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 the bank to go and check with the hr or the admin department ki whether gyan bara is working in wipro pune people know which type of companies to show as employers with the with the advent of printing of better printing technology people are fabricating their salary slips to make it look as genuine such type you see please appreciate a fraudster is not a dud he is a very very intelligent person unfortunately he is taking or choosing a route of making fast money all whom you are listening to today especially your seniors and your professors have chosen to study be in hard to chosen to study in detail build a career and build and live a respectable life and therefore they take their time to reach a respectable and achieved life for example let me give you a, a equation to this a fraudster who wants quick money takes the lift to the top floor people who work hard like all of us take the staircase to the top floor when you take the staircase it's a little difficult it takes a little time but you will reach there you will reach there with respect a fraudster wants to make quick money take the lift and reach there quickly that is the difference but they are very very intelligent people they are watching your system so that they can beat the system 
they're intelligent people they use technology to their to their recourse to beat the system banks learn and develop systems around this so that frauds are not committed on their organization so loan frauds would be application frauds could be impersonation fraud could be uh, the loan frauds also that take place are uh, let's say assets bank is lending to buy a car so you buy a 20 lakh rupees car the bank gives you 17 lakh rupees loan 3 lakh rupees you put so you what do you do what does a fraudster do he actually does not buy a car gives a wrong gives a fake pro forma invoice gives a fake asset uh, purchase details gives a fake invoice and takes the 17 lakh rupees and flees away so the asset which is the security to the bank is not available and then again fraud takes place banks have developed systems banks work with car dealerships so that frauds don't place take place on them banks check online records of various road transport authorities to ensure that the vehicle number given or the chassis number the vehicle the car number given asset number given is actually in the name of the customer so that the customer does not give an asset which is non existent or give an asset which is not in the name of that particular fraudster so these are the frauds which are taking place basic fraud the retail frauds the large number of frauds because these are large number of loans across the country being given to customers you see the uh, the revolution i am not talking of uh, the historic revolutions look at the revolutions which have taken place in the in the early years of 90s what happened we only knew about bicycles there are two people who made revolutions in two wheelers it is the two wheeler companies like the bajaj and the hondas the hero hondas cycles you could see in villages towns and cities cycles were replaced by two wheelers and these two wheelers who they were financed by who banks stepped in a lot of banks lakhs and lakhs of loans were given across the country and it's a revolution it two wheelers from cycles moved to motorcycles and scooters and that's when business grew there frauds grew there motorcycles were never registered motorcycles were never available in many a times and frauds took place yes these are small small loans so the banks have divided their loans in various baskets the retail loans you is a business of volumes number ka dhanda bolte hain hum it is volume i don't do a 500 crores to a reliance industries but i do a 50000 rupees loan to a customer but i do lakhs of customers and i make wafer thin margins but because i am doing lakhs of loans i am doing a 1000 or a 5000 rupees profit into lakhs and that that's how i make the large number of profit profits if you see the large banks whether psu banks or private banks you look at their profit look at us look at profits of a bank like hdfc bank large amount of profits most of their profits come from come from retail lendings retail means lending for a car lending for an asset lending for a, a home loan so these are the type of frauds so asset missing can be the fraud in auto loan fraud likewise in a home loan case there could be again an asset missing a poor valuation i i value a property to say it is 2 crores and i take a 1 crore 80 lakh rupees loan whereas the property is actually only 1 crore rupees what should be my security in a in a in a 1 crore 80 lakh loan my security should be let's say 90% which should be 2 crores so 9 1 crore 80 but if my security itself is 1 crore am i fully secured no i am partially unsecured and that is a fraud the asset not being there you know there are frauds which banks have seen where the flat is not present there is a flat called 14 hiranandan what is that they make a sh they show a flat called 14a hiranandan 14a hiranandan does not, it does not exist the bank a fraudster does not do a fraud only because he does not have the asset the fraudster will finally run away 
he will pay a few installments to keep the bank happy for a, for a little initial period of time finally he will run away so no asset in a couple of months the fraudster is not available he has fled the uh, his his address and he is gone away to another business or another city to leave the blank bank high and dry and that's a fraud which people take place see so see property you should understand boys and girls is a state item state and central item so the registration of a property in every state is different a registration of a property can gives you the access to the system of the country or the state to find out that your property so and so is actually registered in your name likewise the banks also use this system to check whether the property is properly registered the bank intervene with the buyer and the seller to ensure that the property is registered and the property exists but banks can be cheated because the property many a times is does not exist in those places and what happens finally after paying a couple of installments in home loans they will pay about that's my experience or our bank's experience they will pay about 5 6 installments for 5 6 months and then finally vanish no asset no customer what is it it's not a bad debt it's a fraud the bank has to write off the entire loan and when you write off your you are banking insurance students you will understand write off means you have to provide or take away that much money from your profit so fraud hits the bottom line directly a s a default will not fully hit the bottom line of the bank because on default you provide you provide gradually for the loss and you in that period gradual period you are trying to recover the asset recover the loan in a fraud my experience you rarely can recover money out of a fraud case the experience overall if you see recovery from frauds are not more than 5 or 10% totally so banks stand to lose a lot banks and insurance company stand to lose a lot from frauds and therefore there is a requirement by the banks and financial institutions and their regulators that there should be a lot of control mechanism on prevention of fraud and detection and recovery of recovery from frauds i hope you understand what i am saying prevention means that fraud should not happen in your bank detection unfortunately fraud will happen if there is someone who tells that there is no fraud in our organization i think so he is telling us a lie frauds will take place but what is your mechanism what is your initiative to keep those frauds to the minimal is the efficiency of your organization so frauds will indeed take place so do enough to prevent fraud do enough to detect the frauds quickly and do enough to set deterrents that is to ensure that you file police complaints you you recover money as much tell the fraudster at large that you cannot do a fraud with me again i will improvise my system i will detect a fraud quickly i will go behind you along with the police try and arrest you try and put you to trouble and try and recover the money and that is the philosophy of fraud on or of fraud management rbi has mandated all financial institutions and banks should have a fraud control and prevention team in the banks who are working regularly to prevent detect and recover from frauds so coming back to the retail loans as i said home loan frauds assets are not there now let's come to liabilities liabilities means the money which i take from customers is a deposit or a savings account or a current account with a bank however we call it liability not don't go by the term liability as the colloquial term liability in accounting term means is that this money is owed by the bank to customers as and when they call let me give you an example you go to an atm in the night and you let's say you go to an atm at 1 o'clock in the night and you want 1000 rupees you insert your card if your money is is 
there is money in your account and you are identifying yourself properly when you are using your card. How do you identify yourself properly when you are using your card? You are using your card and you are using the right pin. Okay, and they're taking a photograph of yours and so on and so forth. You identify yourself and you say, I want to report, withdraw 1,000 rupees from your 25,000 rupees balance account. Can the bank say, no, I will not give it to you because I don't like you? I do, can I bank say at the ATM that it is too late in the night, I can't give it to you? No. They are automated teller machines, ATMs. Colloquially said, anytime money. If you ask and bank 1,000 rupees, in the mid of night at one o'clock and say, I want withdrawal one of 1,000 rupees. The bank is duty bound to give you that 1,000 rupees. And indeed, in a couple of seconds, the bank dispenses 1,000 rupees to you. So it's it's a money which you call back anytime, I will have to give it to you. Yes, you have a deposit. I know you may have a query that I have a deposit and it's for one year. If you keep a deposit for one year and you come back and say, no, I need the money, by citing a reason and making an application, the bank will break your deposit or partially break your deposit and give you back the money. So technically, money kept in a bank is a liability and to be paid as and well the customer wants that money. Actually, the whole thing of giving, keeping money and giving back your money is trust. You trust a particular bank. You trust State Bank of India. You trust HDFC Bank. And therefore, you keep the money with these banks. Have you not seen losses of customers who have kept money in, unfortunately, in smaller banks? Those banks which have gone bad? What happens? Why do you keep your money in State Bank of India or in a HDFC bank or that matter in an ICICI bank, even if the interest rate is low? Whereas a cooperative bank or a path PDS, a cooperative credit society, gives you 4 or 5% interest more. Why don't you, you or your parents keep money there? Because you trust the large banks. And in that trust, if you lose a percentage or two, you are okay. Because you know, I trust this bank. When I want my money back, my money will be given back to me. My money may grow slightly slower in interest. But my principal money will remain with the bank. And it is lying in trust. And I know I can sleep peacefully, next day I want my money, the bank will give me my money back. That is the edifice of banking or ba banking is entirely trust. So when you keep your money, you are keeping your money in trust. In our original days, I'm sure you would <coughs> no, sorry, uh, or I've seen it in movies, you know, uh, our mothers, our, our aunts, our sisters would have kept the money in, in boxes at home in the chawal, chawal ka barni or in the uh, gahun ka barni. Olden days, where was money kept? Much olden days, gold also was put in a pot and buried uh, into the uh, floor of the, of the home. In those types, of, those days home. Because there was no banking. Now, do you keep money? Yes, you may be keeping a 500 rupees or 10,000 rupees in your, at your home. But where does all your money lie? Majority of your money. Majority of your money lies with banks. Yeah, you may save it later on in mutual funds and fixed deposits. But bank is a much larger platform for keeping your money in trust and allowing it to slowly grow and allowing you to withdraw the money as and when you want the money. So there are frauds which take place on these type of cases. Basic fraud, forgery fraud. We, we issue checks. The check can be forged. Your check can be fabricated with the advent of good printing technology. Checks are being fraudulently made and encashed in branches or in clearing houses of banks, whereas the customer has not even issued that check. So what has banks done? To ensure that forgery takes and instruments are not uh, fabricated at every branch because Today, with Anywhere Banking, your account can be used not only in Thane, it can be used in Calcutta, it can be used in Chennai, Anywhere Banking. So your officer in the bank is not sitting in Chennai. Your officer whom you know in, let's say, Naupada branch in Thane, you will not even, your check is gone to some Chennai branch. What happens then? 
each branch has machines to check whether the check is genuine. They have such type of machines which checks and looks at the paper of the instrument to find whether it is a good check, your check. Your check numbers 1 to 25 is in the system of the bank. They will check whether yours is check number 1 to 25 or it is check number 26. If it is check number 26, which is not issued to you, the bank will not will stop the payment. So various type of checks are done at branch levels, at central levels to ensure fabricated and forged checks are not passed. But let me tell you, forgery is an almost like an art. There are people who can do excellent forgery. What happens? My signature can be forged by a forge a fraudster and present it. Your question will come, where will he get a check of Gyanbara? Either he will steal my check or he will fabricate, he will make an entire new check and make it look like Gyanbara's check. Most of these fabricated checks with the technology the banks use get caught. But sometimes in the pressure of work, sometimes uh, negligence of an officer, a check can get passed. So what has banks done? Not only the, got various security features on his check, the regulator of banks. You see, the regulator of the bank, which is Reserve Bank of India, you should understand, students, is a very, very uh, conscious regulator. It knows that the bank is only using little part of its money. The entire large 95% of the money that the bank is handling is customer money. If today something has to go wrong, like we have seen, in, unfortunately, in a few cooperative banks, when the bank goes bad, the bank is then put under control of Reserve Bank of India, people lose money. Hard-earned savings have been lost. People commit suicides, unfortunately, because the bank has gone bad. Bank has not gone bad only because of fraud. Bank has gone bad because of incorrect decisions or actions of the banking management. Decisions of lending, wrong lending, decisions of uh, excess lending, all these type of the bank can go bad and can have to be under the control of uh, Reserve Bank of India. But in bargain, who's losing? Customers are losing their hard-earned money. There are a lot of developments which take place, therefore. Therefore, RBI bought in a couple of things. They said they have started pushing banks to tell customers that don't use, use checks, use various other things. Therefore, if you, remember, if you know boys and girls, there is something called NEFT payment, correct? RTGS payment. These are online technology payments where there is no use of an instrument which will which can fall in the hands of a fraudster. They did this. They also said, okay, let us bring into CTS, check truncation system. CTS, check truncation system so that your checks which went, let's say I owe Parab Ma'am 10,000 rupees. I issue, I say, say a bank check to Parab Ma'am for 10,000 rupees because I have to pay her back. The check has traveled from me to Parab Ma'am. Parab ma'am needs to collect the money, so it is she will keep the money safe with her. She will go to her State Bank of India and give them check there. The check in the normal course, State Bank of India, the, the, the clearing officer will go to the clearing house and in the earlier days and get the check cleared. The check has gone into the environment. This check can get stolen. Or I had to give Parab ma'am the check and the Parab ma'am, I live in I live in Kolapur, Parab ma'am lives in Thane. I post the check or I courier the check. The check can get lost in during courier. The check can get copied during courier. Check can get fabricated. Check can get stolen. A 1,000 rupees check can be made 1 lakh rupees. You make changes on the checks and forgery takes place and fraud takes place. What did the RBI do? RBI said check truncation system. In my example, the check is presented in State Bank of India comes to ICICI Bank in the clearing area and ICICI Bank then gives the credit to State Bank of India where Parab Ma'am's account is credited. What has happened? The check has traveled. RBI in the last few years has said that now you don't need to uh, send the check from State Bank of India to ICICI Bank. 
स्टेट बैंक विल होल्ड द चेक एंड ऑन लाइन आस्क आईसीआईसी बैंक विद द इमेज दिस इज अ चेक इशूड बाई ज्ञान बारा टू पर मैम इज दिस अ गुड चेक सो ऑल द चेक विल हैव नाइन सच फीचर वेर इन इन ऑल बैंक द चेक फीचर विल रिमेन द सेम यू कैन एड अ फ्यू मोर सिक्योरिटी फीचर्स बट द नाइन फीचर्स आर कॉमन टू एंटायर बैंकिंग सिस्टम सो द चेक डज नॉट ट्रेवल फ्रॉम स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया टू आई सी आई सी आई बैंक वेर इट कुड गेट इन द क्लियरिंग जोन इन द मार्केट प्लेस इट कैन गेट फेब्रिकेट सो दे इंट्रोड्यूस चेक ट्रंकेशन सिस्टम सो फर्स्ट दे इंट्रोड्यूट इंट्रोड्यूस ऑनलाइन पेमेंट्स विच इज विच इज आर टी जी एस एंड ऑनलाइन पेमेंट्स then they said let's do check check truncation system then in the last 10 years we have seen internet banking you don't need to do anything in the comfort of your home you are using internet banking i hope you all understand what is internet banking internet banking is where you are using internet to access and transact from your bank account bank gives you access through uh, the internet by you feeding in various passwords we are making various gates so that no fraud takes place and you can pay i can pay for a ma'am 10000 rupees without even issuing a check without even moving from my home i just open my bank account and i can open my bank account not between 9 to 5 in the day but i can do it even at 2 o'clock in the night internet banking wire transfers check truncation systems positive no, there are something called positive pay positive pay means large companies when they they still have to issue checks when they issue checks they will issue those checks and tell their bank that i have issued 1 to 100 checks for 100 rupees each pass these checks only so if some other check comes that check will get returned so banks are doing large amount of prevention activities to ensure that frauds don't place take place on the customers let me tell you in spite of that frauds unfortunately take place and that is where you and i need to understand as banking professionals what we should do to prevent fraud and what we should do to detect fraud so these type of frauds are taking place i said check frauds account opening as i said account opening i don't have a kyc so i i use someone else's kyc do we know that your aadhar card your pan card your election cards your voter's card your driving licenses all can get fabricated so there are various checks and balances like you look at your pan card your fourth and fifth alphabet of your pan card is p and your initial of your surname let's say my surname is b so my fourth and fifth alphabet is p b p is personal b is bara please open your pan cards and have a look at it every system in the country is working to create hurdles for fraud you can't create only one big gate what do you do at your home you have a door you have a safety door your door has three latches your safety door has two one latch you are creating various levels to beat a fraudster or a burglar to come into your home you have cctv accesses at homes to see who is coming you have you have cameras why do you do all this you you are doing various hurdles to avoid fraud and when a fraudster or a fraud, or a robber or a burglar knows अरे ज्ञान के घर में तो चार लैचेज है दो दरवाजे हैं कैमरा है कुत्ता है मैं इसके घर में चोरी नहीं करूंगा मैं और किसी के घर में चोरी करूंगा सो आई एम नॉट सेइंग आईसीआईसी बैंक और स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया ओनली डज दिस ऑल बैंक्स आर डूइंग इट सम बैंक्स आर डूइंग मोर सम बैंक्स आर डूइंग लेस टू अवॉइड फ्रॉड बट देर इज अ रेगुलेटर हु सेइंग डू दीज बेसिक थिंग्स अदरवाइज आई विल नॉट अलाउ यू टू डू बैंकिंग my regulator is a very very strong regulator reserve bank of india so there are these type of frauds i can take over your account you see when a bank account is fraudulently used or wrongly opened the risk is much larger than a fraud taking place in a one in a 10 lakh rupees or a 20 lakh rupees home loan or a 2 lakh 10 lakh rupees or car loan you know why because my loss in a fraud on a loan is restricted to the loan amount i am a large bank i can take their shocks but what happens if a bank account is open in a bank and uh money is laundered money laundering takes place 
drug money comes into the bank. There is no loss to the bank. No, money has come, money has gone away. What is the loss to the bank? The regulator, the, the law enforcement authorities will make the bank's life miserable and even could put fines and stop operations of a bank though money has come into one bank account and gone out of the bank account and bank has not made any monetary loss. The accounts which get used wrongly is a larger risk than the a loan fraud or it's a larger risk even if the bank has not made any loss. Let's go back to uh, 2001 where the uh, the 26, uh, the 9 11 happened in US. You are all aware of the 9 11 event, unfortunate event, where the two World Trade Center buildings and uh, the Pentagon and all that was, uh, was, was damaged. So, when the US authorities investigated this, they found that a lot of money through small, small volumes or small, small sums came into. US through various bank accounts which were withdrawn to fund this terrorist attack. That's where the money laundering or the anti-money laundering act came into place in the US where they studied how that you need to study the flow of money into bank accounts and control, stop or eradicate such type of wrong flows. So banking, so money laundering got instituted in US and after US, every country, including India, have their own money laundering act. I'm sure in banking and insurance course, you will indeed study about anti-money laundering. So coming back to the discussion on liability and liability frauds or bank account frauds, the risk of reputation of regulator uh, inst instructions against the bank, repute, goodwill of the bank is much, much larger than a fraud on a loan account of a bank. The bank will lose only the loan amount there. Here it can lose much more than the, am the amount in question by way of fines, reputation and instructions against the bank. So that is why liability frauds or liability accounts or bank accounts are very, very well guarded by banks so that the regulator, the law enforcement authorities and the customers have immense amount of trust that the bank is doing everything correct to handle, open, and maintain these accounts. KYC fraud. See, earlier days, when I learned my banking, when I was a child in college, in school, my father had an account in Syndicate Bank. How did he open the bank account in Syndicate Bank? Uh, our neighbor went with my father to Syndicate Bank and told the branch manager in Syndicate Bank, yes, I know Mr. Bara. He is working in Voltas and he's been a person a citizen of India and living in Thane for a very long time in the same society with us. The branch manager took his signature and opened the bank account for us. RBI over the years has come out with that you cannot have introduction for every account. So you need to have strong KYC. So KYC is what know your customer. You don't need an introduction, but your identity proof, your address proof, your, your address visit, your identity is established by the banks and visited by the bank and accounts are opened in banks. What is bank doing nowadays? When you are opening an account, you are not opening a first-time account. First-time account was that Prime Minister Jandhan. That's a different thing. But normally, if you are opening an account, they will ask you to give you a, give a check for deposit from your earlier bank account so that they know that you are already a customer of Access Bank, for example, and you are opening a bank account with ICICI Bank. So these are the checks they will do. Your Aadhaar card is validated. Your PAN card is validated. Your address proofs are validated by the bank before they actually open the account. They don't go and meet the customer in a park or a hotel. They go and meet the customer in their place of residence or their place of work to establish that he is the customer and I'm opening a correct account. We in ICICI Bank, introduced something called tab banking. Tab is nothing else a tablet. What did we do? I, I don't know whether you will remember, at least your pro professors will remember. There was an ad of ICICI Bank. I'm not selling an account of ICICI Bank. I'm just trying to explain. There was an ad of Amitabh Bachchan flying a kite you know, on, the, on, the, 
on the roof of a home and then somebody who is holding the uh, the manja the firki uh, says ye kon hai ladka niche jo khada hai to he says are you the bank account open karne aaya so then amita bachan hands over the uh, reins of the um, of the kite to that to his fellow or his relative and comes down uh, to another floor in the flat in the in the open home and you know uh, the officer of the bank takes his photograph uh, takes the photograph of his aadhar card or his uh, voter's id and asks amita bachan to sign on the you know, tablet what has he done he has taken a recent photograph of amita bachan so that there is no 20 year old photograph he has taken a recent he has taken a self photograph of the identity proof and the address proof on his tablet he has made amita bachan sign on the tablet of course a paper is subsequently also signed what has he done he has taken physical check or he has done a check of amita bachan amita bachan is just for that he has taken a customer's photograph customer's document photograph and a signature of the customer on the tablet there is proof that he has visited that person's residence because the latitude longitude addresses of the customer uh, or of the visitor of the employee who has gone to the customer's house is captured and another advantage is that all this he can quickly send to his processing home to immediately open the account of that person so tablet banking now all the banks are doing tablet banking just trying to tell you to work around processes for better better services better uh better uh, uh to, to reduce fraud these type of activities are being uh, adopted so that fraud is kept away fraud is controlled uh, param ma'am you have to uh, prompt me uh, how much time more i have so that i'll quickly move to that <clears throat> sir around uh, 10 minutes more okay so i will quickly move i'm i'm running slow so there are frauds which are taking place on atms now you you insert your card and your card is getting copied by a fraudster what are fraudsters doing they are visiting the atms and they are putting such machines where your card is being your card is copied if you look at your card there is a magnetic strip on the rear of your card which is actually holding all your information if that is copied on to a machine and your pin number is photographed by way of a external unauthorized camera then that that data on the magnetic strip can be copied on another magnetic strip and your card can get compromised so these are the type of things which fraudsters are doing so what are we doing we are we are using machines which cannot have uh, such readers inserted but one more thing we banks are doing largely is trying to educate customers telling customers be careful you see prevention is better than cure this is a age old saying you cannot always talk about cure main bimar padunga uske baad main cure hunga yes you will unfortunately sometimes fall ill but if i my immunity is good if i prevent well i will rarely fall ill so i need to have immunity i need to prevent common sense boys and girls common sense so what am i doing so i i am trying to do enough you see i am not opened a bank in a banana republic ki mera kya hai customer ka loss hua hai customer ka loss hai that is his problem i will have to shut my shop and go away in few years if i have to run my bank like a state bank of india which is 150 year old bank i need to not only give you best services but i need to build immense amount of trust and work around find solutions where fraud is minimum customer feels safe customer feels happy so it has to be a very happy situation with the customer he says main yahan aake paisa deke gaya hu mera banking bahut easy hai yahan par and security is very good main yahi banking karunga if that feeling a customer has that's where customers will increase of a particular bank and every bank is trying to do that and top of it top of it there is a regulator who is sitting very very strongly on all banks and monitoring operations of all banks we as bankers spend large amount of our times we have large departments called compliance departments who are only complying with queries of inspections and normal queries of rbi 
to for the RBI to do a dip check, like a temperature thermometer, and see whether the bank operations are good and customers are safe. So ATMs. Now, what is skimming? As I told you, what is skimming in in normal terms? Gari do deta do aai do da chhi saar karte saai karte saai ni tube bano do apun. Ani do da apun piyala ki va chaha bano aila chodo. What is that? I have skimmed away the milk. If I skim away your data from your magnetic strip, if I take away the data from my magnetic strip, your data is so strong that I can make two. I can take that data and copy it on some other card and use your card and defraud you. That's why it's called skimming. I've taken out the uh, the main material from your card. Let's go to quickly cyber crime. What is cyber crime? When the technology is being used and your technology is such that because today no banks are being customer you in fact if i ask one of you a question somebody can just answer me when did you last visit your branch i know even if the professors can tell me did you all visit your branch recently i am not very sure you have visited a branch for a very long time not because of covid and other things even otherwise because the banks have given you such facility mobile banking Internet banking. You go to an ATM. You can drop your check there. You don't need to visit. Banks are not saying don't come to my branch. Branch bank is saying I am making banking safe and comfortable for you. So you use internet banking. You use mobile banking. You are using now digital banking. Why are you doing that? Because it's safe. It's easy. It's convenient. And that is the way of life. I can't. I can't say I will only do checkbook banking. Yes, you will issue checks, but you will do lot of other things in banking using technology. So, when the when if there is a product, there is a fraudster around it. Believe me, fraudsters are studying banks and individual banks to try and beat the system. And what banks are doing? Banks are trying to beat the fraudsters. So it's a continuous warfare which is going on. Don't get scared, students. You are banking and insurance students. You will understand that. Innovation of good products, innovation of security features, is a continuous process. And I mind you, I'm using a word innovation. I'm not using discovery. Discovery is left to Graham Bell and Edison. Innovation is what business bankers use to keep innovating so that the system, the banking transactions become safer, easier, and fraud free. So banks are doing a lot around that. Fishing. What is fishing? When you go to your village, your relatives go. Take you to the to the lake or to the sea to to catch fish. The same f f i s h i n g is made into p h i s i n g. Is when fraudster sends a lot of mails to various customers with images looking like your bank, saying I am your banker. Please give me your details, and you give away all the details. You see, in India, no, we are very very innocent type of people. If my school teacher. If my professor, if my banker, if my postmaster general, if a state bank of India branch manager ask you for some information, आप खड़ा होके information दोगे. Go and ask your parents this. अरे मेरा banker ने मुझे question पूछा. मुझे state bank का branch manager ने question पूछा. मुझे professor ने मुझे पूछा कि आप क्या करते हैं. I immediately give away information without even ensuring that that person is my banker and even Reasoning why my customer banker wants my information. Your banker does not want your information. He has all your information. Your banker does not need your PIN number because the PIN number is to be used in the system. Your banker does not know your PIN number. If you remember when your first PIN came for your debit card, it has come in a perforated sheet with a dot matrix print. If you tear open the sheet, you will find. upside down printing it is not front page printing because the carbon the data when it came to the system for printing it was encrypted it got decrypted only when the printer took place and your pin number 1 2 3 4 got printed and that came we tell you don't accept a pin number if the paper is torn open what have we done we have sent you the pin number 1 2 3 4 on a perforated sheet only for you to know the pin number we also tell you tear the paper after you have by hearted 
your pin. I know it's a difficult world. It's a world of our passwords. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. There are easier ways to remember. I don't need to tell you young boys and girls how to remember your passwords, your pins. There are ways, but this is a world of pin numbers and passwords. You will have to, I and you, why only you, even we, who are your earlier generation, will have to live with that. But it is your security. Is there a way to return and say, I will not do digital banking, I will not do internet, I will not use internet for my banking? I don't think so. Don't you pay your rickshaw wala Paytm? What have you done? You have used digital banking. Don't you go and pay money in a Bata shop by uh, scanning the QR code? What have you done? You have used digital banking. There is no return. Play safe. Don't use unnecessary sites. Be careful. Don't go to a small hotel. Don't answer phone calls for data. No banker wants your information. My insurance guru corporation say bol rahi hu. Boss, the caller needs to tell you which company is calling you. They may tell you, my Aditya Birla se phone kar rahi Why does Aditya Birla need to call you for your insurance premium? I'll pay it. Don't answer such calls. It, these are most of the calls are unfortunately fraud calls. Somebody is calling you to say, aap to main Olex se baat kar raha hu ya kar rahi hu and I want you. Do you have a car to sell? Yes, there may be some genuine calls. Half of the times, unfortunately, they are fake calls. When do you pay money using digital method? You will scan a QR code to receive money or to pay money. Can somebody answer this? Even the professor can answer. I use a QR code only to pay money. To receive money, I don't need to give a QR code. So what the fraudster is doing is telling me Ab ye QR code scan kari hai, aapko paisa Are, main QR code kyun scan karu? Jab mujhe paisa receive karna hai. Main sirf bhejne ke liye QR code karna. What is QR code? A quick response code. This is digital. We'll quickly go to digital. So what is Froster doing? He is fishing. He is taking information. He is skimming. He is copying your data. He is wishing. Sometimes he doesn't know your PIN number. So he calls you. All of you should go and see the serial. I think so in Netflix called Jamtara. It is near to actual story. Have all of you all seen Jamtara? Banking and insurance students. Satya ma'am and Parab ma'am, please advise your students to go and see this movie after, your, after their exams. They should see this serial. It will give them an insight on digital and card frauds. It is near to actual. Sure, Me sir. And, sorry? Sure, sir. Sure, sure, sure sir. Sure. sure. Thank you. Me and my colleagues have investigated various frauds in Andhra Pradesh and and Bombay, where um, the police efficiently has gone and investigated in Jamtara, Deoghar, in that area. It's an industry. It's a cottage industry there. You don't need anything else. You just need two smartphones or maybe one smartphone to call and to do transactions parallelly and cheat innocent customers. So what are they doing? They are asking information of their PIN, of the OTP. Customers are giving it. Why should I tell my PIN to anyone on the phone? Why should I tell my OTP? OTP is for what? OTP is for you to feed it into the transaction live. It is not to tell it to someone. There are customers, educated, young like you and all of us, and unfortunately, old customers who are giving away information. Don't give your information. Bankers are telling you, don't share your information. Your bank does not need any information. You have filled a form. I have hajar information about you. I have all my data about you. I'm using that carefully. I will not squander it away. I will not sell it away. There is Data Protection Act now which is coming. All the more for banks and financial institutions and other companies to control and to safely hold data of their customers. If I am known to be a bad bank, all of y'all will leave my bank and go to some other bank. Correct? So therefore, data is another issue which should not be shared. Banks are also not sharing data. So much so that I cannot share my office password to my colleague. I am, I am picked up, punished, terminated if I am doing sharing of passwords of my access. Because if by opening my laptop, he can do transactions of customers. I'm a banker. 
So leave alone customers. I'm not sharing data with my own colleagues. I cannot share and I keep changing my password every uh, fortnight or uh, twice or once a month. It's mandatory. If I don't change my office password, it'll, it'll lapse. I'll have to uh, go to technology and part of my password will come to my boss. My boss will ask me, did you change password? Kyu change ho rahe? Sir, I forgot. How can you forget? So if I am having this discipline with my bank, within my bank, can you imagine my most important stakeholder? Who is my most important stakeholder? You, my customer. I will keep you on my head because I value your business and I value you the most. I cannot afford to lose you or I cannot afford that you lose money because of my lap system. If you lose money on your own, it's sad, but you cannot lose money because I was inefficient. Bank was inefficient. RBI watching and sitting like a hawk on me saying, if a customer has lost money on digital platform, you investigate, bank investigate. If the customer has filed a complaint in three days, if the customer has filed a complaint in seven days, you investigate. And if you cannot prove the customer was negligent, let's say the customer didn't give away information, and it is because of whatever, not customer's fault, the customer has lost money, the bank will have to pay the money back to the customer. So the banking system, I'm talking of banks, I'm talking insurance, IRDA as another control, but they are controlling the banks to be to ensure that the banks are safe. Do you know OTP? I'm sure all of you all know OTP. On behalf of your students, if one of the professors tell me, yes, OTP is one-time password. It came in 2009. Believe me, professors and students, in foreign countries, developed countries like even the US, OTP is not a mandate today. In September 2009 onwards, India has introduced, RBI has introduced the second factor authentication, which is OTP. So you not only put your CVV number on the, on the internet while you're using a Doing an online transaction, you have to also put an OTP, which is only for that transaction and which is available only for a few seconds. Why? So that you are safeguard. RPI is a very strong regulator. In spite of that, frauds are taking place. Email frauds. Customers are, banks are being written by email. Gyanbara at gmail.com. I'm writing to ICICI Bank. Please transfer money to Param Ma'am. This 10,000 rupees which I, would, which I have. And she has a bank account in ICICI. For example. Why do you need an email? Except if it's an NRI transaction who's sitting in US details, some safeguards, some assignments, some undertakings are taken. But in India, why do I need to transfer money only on an email of a customer? I'm stopped. I'm not using emails. I'm telling my customer, you are use your internet banking. No? Why are you writing an email to me to transfer money to, to Parabma? You use your internet banking and give money to Parabma, whether she has an account in ICSA or she has an account in State Bank. So we have stopped using email. But let me tell you, boys and girls, there are lakhs and lakhs of frauds and crores of money has been lost in banks because a wrong email has been uh, received. Email can be wrong. Email can be the same email because somebody has hacked into my system and sent an email. Somebody has opened an email which is similar looking to my email. Gyan Bara instead of B-A-R-A-H, it is G-Y-A-N-B-O-R-A-H. Similar Gmail account has opened. Banker is not able to find, read it find the difference and does the transaction. Why should we do this? No, avoid this risk. There are better, safer means of doing transactions. So email frauds, slowly stop. Smaller banks are still facing that problem. Internal frauds, banks, employees. See, not all employees will be good. All There will be, unfortunately, some employees who are doing frauds. So those are internal. There is a vigilance unit of every bank who looks at transactions looks at bank accounts, looks at lifestyles. I cannot be a, 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 a financial crime prevention head and drive a Mercedes-Benz E-Class. This is some problem. Does my salary afford me to drive a Mercedes-Benz E-Class? This, the bank picks up, studies. Why is customer? I am supposed to declare all my bank accounts to my, to my uh, bank. I cannot have a bank account other than ICICI Bank. I cannot have a trading share trading account other than ICICI Securities. Why? Not because of monopolistic activity. It is because you are supposed to work within a protocol and you are allowing the bank 
to or monitor me. You see, there is a difference between we as bankers and my counterpart or my batchmate who is a sales or a technology person in a in a manufacturing line. My reputation, the way I am, the way we uh, transact, we have to be much above board. And therefore, banks are wanting their employees to be above board. There are, you see, because of agricultural support and rural uh, requirements, the government has asked banks to lend to agricultural um, people, people with agricultural background and from rural backgrounds. Frauds there are, we take, we lend money basis their land holdings because their land holdings, what they grow on that land holding gives them minimum support price of grapes, of wheat, of rice. So we know that this farmer will make so many crops in a year, so much money he will gain, so much money he will have access, he will be able to pay my loan. So I give a loan basis is land holding. Many a times the land holdings don't exist. It is difficult to demarcate my land parcel with your land parcel in a large village. So I am, many a times the documents at the Talati and the revenue records are fabricated. So such type of frauds take place in, in agri-banking. <clears throat> there is something called self-help group. What is a self-help group? Lijat Papad. There are 10-20 ladies who are making Papad for Lijat and selling it to Lijat. They, to, to enhance their livelihoods, we are giving them loans who are, as a group, they guarantee each other's loan. Many a times, the agents who come to us for giving the loans to such groups, self-help groups, SHGs, they actually don't exist. Or the money which is given to them, the agent takes it away. These are the type of frauds taking place on the agri-banking. On the corporate side, the frauds which are taking place, financial manipulation, balance sheets are fabricated, fund flows are fabricated. We give money against stocks, stocks don't exist. Factories don't run properly. The intent, see, if you if the factory is not running, there is a there's a recession, we understand it's an NPA manager, it's a non-profit performing asset. But your intent is to dive, is to siphon off money, then it's a fraud. The assets against for which we give factories, we are giving plants, the plants are sold away. The the assets, financial assets are liquidated, then these are frauds. So coming to insurance frauds. Uh, you see, there is broadly defined, divided between life insurance, health insurance, and general insurance. In life insurance, when I am taking a policy, see, the insurance company is taking the money. It has no problem. It is taking the premium for me. But it should know that whether you are having the capacity to pay the premium for 20 years. So it looks at your profile. It looks at your health, your date of birth. Your date of birth is important because it has to uh, tell you how many years you, after which you will make a claim or how many years you can pay the premium. People make falsification of such type of information. And when the claim comes up, the bank, the insurance company investigates and find out oh, this is a misstatement. If it's a misstatement, if there is a lack of trust, the insurance company may reject your claim. Health insurance. What is health insurance? Basically, many claims. People make wrong claims. Not hospitalized, but still makes a claim. Doctor is conniving. Okay. Deaths take place. Death is given for wrong reason. Death is taking place, whereas customer is actually uh, has taken death. You see, we are facing a case where uh, somewhere in, in down south, um, customer has taken a term policy and has given that term policy as a security to a person from whom he borrowed money, from whom he took money. And this person has died in a road accident. The road accident seems to be unnatural death. By the death, we'll have to pay the claim. The claim will go to the person who lent the money to my insurance, uh, to my policy holder. So we are investigating whether the death was natural or was he killed. All these type of things can happen. Doctors and hospitals doing fraud. There are various hospitals which are put on negative list, which will not be given as uh, hospitals who can, who can uh, uh, where many claims can be available, cashless, non-cashless. In general insurance, assets, the car, the machines are stolen away. The vehicles are burnt. There are fire. Fire claim is the historical fraudulent claim in any insurance company. People will on their own put fire to the factory, take out everything and show that there was stock of crores and try and make a claim. 
these are frauds which take place then there are claims where actually loss has not taken place and customers policy holders will make a claim mind you insurance companies do basic investigation on a claim i know it you may think ki premium lete samay to aapne le liya yes maine le liya lekin aapka claim should be genuine you should not make misrepresentation and min statements in your policy when you are giving so you have to be careful as banking insurance students you should understand also for your family that we should not make misstatements we should not give wrong information so that when you make a claim your claim is rejected death claims i explained to you death which is unnatural death so what is banks doing banks see with 2000 i'll take five more minutes per ma'am and i'll done them yeah okay sir five more minutes no problem banks what are digital payments digital payments are if you look at 2016 november where uh, our prime minister bought in demonetization and then bought digital payment he did not say cashless transactions he said less cash transactions so banks technology fintech company financial technology companies have come together and giving such products so that you can do easy banking has in google not given you a google pay google is what google is an information provider today google pay is there correct all you boys and girls are using google pay mobile to mobile you are making payment so technology has come in to support banking payments so what are the methods internet banking we talked cards they are using cards online see we use credit cards and debit cards in two ways correct one is you are using it physical you are buying something bata you bought a shoes 1000 rupees slip you you put your pin number and you can take away the shoes that is physical but when you are using your card whether debit card or in credit card on the internet to buy to book a ticket to book a, a holiday that is it is using digital payments it is using technology wallets i told you paytm was a wallet there are various wallets where you can keep money and use that money to buy small small things upi unified so what is what is upi is doing upi is allowing you to make payments all of you all may be using upi or receive payment when i what is bank told customer that you make a upi of yours which is connected to your bank account and to your mobile account. mobile so when you give your upi address to a person for example parab ma'am will give me her upi for me to pay her 10000 that example so she doesn't need to tell me i don't know who's gyan why should i tell her my bank tell him my bank account and my bank details i'm only giving my upi from the upi he will pay me money will come to me technology has come to news this what are the frauds we talked about phishing we talked about wishing we talked about sim exchange be careful be careful if your sim is gone blank if your sim has gone off tell your parents also immediately check has somebody called you so has somebody taken control of your mobile and deactivated your sim and gone and taken a sim on your behalf and done the transaction why does he need the sim because you otp pin will come to message will come to that sim whereas your sim authorized sim has gone blank so if your authorized sim goes blank immediately go to your uh, mobile service provider and ask him why it has gone there are lakhs of frauds which are taking place because of sim exchanges malware is a software it's a bad software which is sent to your mobile or to your laptop and it reads your laptop your banking system and takes away data the fraudster is way ahead of us boys and girls we need to be careful banks need to be careful banks need to educate you and we need to use caution in every transaction we skimming i spoke to you collect request olex frauds are taking place where we cannot make out qr code is sent to say you scan this money will come to you why do you need to scan when you have to receive money so you have to tell your people you have to tell yourself to be careful and these are the frauds which are taking place you need to know all these frauds and an and a little more as banking and insurance students so what are banks doing banks onboarding preventive onboarding means when we are taking over when we are taking the account or, or introducing the account we need to introduce or we need to open accounts only of people whom we think are good so it's not written on my face that i am good so i have to do a check on his sibil i need to do a check on his profile i need to do a check on data 
whether he is a defaulter somewhere else, whether he is a fraudster somewhere else. Banks have come together and now sharing data. Uh, uh, it's a software called Hunter by a company called Experian, where all fraud data of all banks are put, and I have access. So when I am doing a loan or an account of Gyanbara, the bank will check is Gyanbara a fraudster somewhere else. If he's fraudster somewhere else, I will not use him. I will not introduce him. I will not take him over. Training, internal training, customer training. I need to keep doing this continuously to beat frauds. See, I'm saying it's innovation, not, uh, it is not discovery. I have to keep innovating good things, good practices to ensure that I am as running as fast as a fraudster to give my customer safe banking, good, give him a good experience so that he keeps trust in me. And I tell the fraudster in my action, beware of me. Don't do fraud with me. There's another stakeholder who's very, very important, who is the police, whom we work with very, very strongly to ensure and work with the police to tell them, please help us catch the fraudster. Please help us book the fraudster. Please help us punish the fraudster. And also, please help us to recover the money through the legal system. So that's what we are doing. And technology. With technology, why I'm saying technology? There is a lot which technology does to stop fraud. I, as a human being, can look at some paper and say this is fraud or not fraud. But if there is a lack of information available across the country and world, can I, as an individual or as 100 individuals, look at it? But technology will use a lot of softwares to study and say, this is good, this is bad, this is how you should do. So at the time of engaging with a customer, preventive vigilance, we train customers, we use technology, we good, use good processes so that my process is not fraud prone. If I have a process of getting a customer and not checking his credit records, which is available in the market, and I have a bad process, I will onboard bad customers. So I need to use technology. I need to have a process which will tell me that these are good customers because customer ke chehre pe nahi likha hai, main chodu. Main customer ka account lunga, so I will check where he lives, where he stays. Na ki main usko garden mein milke uska account khodunga. Thank you. I am done with my presentation. I know I busted some time, but uh, that's uh, few questions. The first question, if somebody can answer me, uh, whether the burglary is a fraud or it's not a fraud. So no one can answer. Huh? Sorry, uh, uh, so students are YouTube live. They are not in a Zoom link. So, okay. Uh, okay. yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll answer. Uh, burglary is not a fraud because the chore or the theft thief uh, is, is not connected to me. He could break open into my office and take away my assets or my laptops but if the same thing if there is a go down and my customer whom i gave a loan against the goods in the go down quietly from the back door takes away the goods and that's a fraud though it's a theft but he has cheated me he knows that he has given these goods in hypothecation or in or in lien to me but he quietly takes it away uh, cheating me, breach of trust, theft, uh, and uh, cheating, then it's a fraud. But a fraudster, but if a burglar takes it away, he's not cheated me. He just found my goods, he broke open and he took it away. So difference of fraud and 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 theft. I just trying to make that difference. I am done. Uh, I don't, so since yes, we are on YouTube, I don't know whether there will be questions, but... Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Indeed, you really gave us a very insight uh, about uh, how the frauds could take place and how we have to secure ourselves and our data uh, from uh, being uh, stolen. Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Actually, indeed. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, actually, sir, uh, there are questions, but yes, uh, all the questions, your PPT and your explanation has already uh, taken care of. One question is there, how we have to secure our funds uh, when the bank itself is hacked? Uh, yes. So you, if the bank system is hacked, by point of their definition, I'll tell you, it is the bank system who is hacked. So if if the bank system is hacked, your money is safe because the bank will have to compensate. Of course, that will depend how rich the bank is or how 
large network the bank is uh, for the bank to pay back the money of the customer. So therefore, um, answering the straight question, if the bank system is act, it is not the customer's responsibility. It is the bank's responsibility. Of course, the customer will be will be concerned whether my bank is capable enough to pay me my money back. I hope you understand. It is my fault because my system has got up. So therefore, a bank has to have very, very good, strong systems, firewalls to ensure that the bank system is not hacked. We know of a particular case uh, in the last five, six, four, five years, two banks. One was the Bangladesh Bank and second was unfortunately a bank in India, a cooperative bank. So system was hacked. There's no point talking of their names. But banks, large banks are doing large amount of expenditure on technology to safeguard and firewall their systems. But the answer is the liability is of the bank, not of the customer. Not of the customer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, as we have come to our end of this session, uh, I would like to take the opportunity to uh, express my sincere gratitude towards our uh, BPM, Dr. Bedeker, sir, our principal, Dr. Suchitra A. Naik, for continuous support, all our vice principals, degree, uh, vice principals of degree college, IQSC coordinator, Dr. Pradna Rajay Bahadur, ma'am, our librarian, Dr. Uh, Narayan Basi, sir, all the HODs, and of course, the backbone of our institute, uh, sorry, backbone of our department, Dr. Brunmai Tate, ma'am, for her continuous support in all our endeavors, uh, all the teacher colleagues and technical team and the students. I'm really very thank you. And of course, our today's guest speaker, Dr. Gyan Bara, sir. Uh, really, sir, you gave us really a very good and detailed information of all the types of frauds and how uh, we have to secure ourselves from uh, taking this uh, data stolen. Yes, thank you so much, sir. So uh, I can declare that, uh, ma'am, run my ma'am. Uh, yeah, we'll take yes, one photograph. Uh, yes, I, yes, ma'am. I request yeah. all the participants to please turn on the camera and uh, students have joined all through the YouTube. But yes, uh, yes. sir, will you please uh, stop sharing? sharing. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I'll do that one. Uh, all the participants. Uh... Is that done now? Yes. Yes. yes Just one yes. question before, uh, while everyone gets, I would humbly request uh, Satya ma'am, uh, Param ma'am and others to please uh, uh, give me a feedback. I don't know what, what is your process of feedback, whether this yes, has really yes. met, your, yes, met your expectation, whether we need to do something more. It will actually yes. help me to come back to you and other colleges uh, better. Thank you. Sure, sir. Because we have a practice to take the feedback after the session. Yeah, sure, ma'am. And sure. uh, the link will be shared with the students and with the teachers, those who have uh, attended this today's session. Sure. Uh, so, it's surely little, I will... Sure. Yeah, I'll it's just a little practice. being selfish in asking that. That will only help me to improvise. Yes, sir. No? Definitely. Sure, sir. Definitely, sure, sir. definitely, sir. Sure, sir. Okay. Yeah. So I request all the teachers, those who are able to start, turn on the camera, please turn on the camera, those who have joined the session. And thank you very much. I am associated with my own college. <laughs> that's an opportunity you, all of you all gave me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank uh, you so a, much. Sir. It's a great pleasure, sir. You are here. And... Uh, actually, time is too short and I really apologize for yeah, the I think same. So, as a Fraud and cybercrime as a subject yes. uh, needs a little more longer. Yes. Just uh, exactly. yes, sir. yeah, exactly. And, yes, and uh, I would I would take the initiative of coming and approaching y'all and uh, understanding if we can do a longer, uh, you know, a module. Uh, yes, sure. I think yes, it is a very important requirement for students, uh, all students, yes. especially for banking and insurance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Yes, Thank you so Thank much, you sir. So much. Thank you so Thank much, so much ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can I can I close and exit? Thank you. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Once again. Samida, madam, please stop recording and we can. Uh, yes, ma'am. In the session. Yes, ma'am. Thank, yes, ma Thank, ma Thank, Thank you very much, Samida. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am.
yes thank you thank you archana ma'am thank you thank you thank you thank you everyone yeah bye